Well, guys, Conor McGregor has made some interesting call-outs lately, including Diego Sanchez and Manny Pacquiao. We're talking about both of those right now. What's up, Barnhill family? Welcome back to the channel. Yo. So Nick, Conor McGregor is at it again. Yes. He's sharing private messages with the boss. He's calling out Manny Pacquiao and apparently now Diego Sanchez. Yeah, yeah. He's added him to the hit list. You know, it's so it's so funny. And, and I, I was thinking about this last night as I was watching the post-fight press conference. Since Conor McGregor has been uh, a champion, let's just say that because I don't know if it was before the champ, but since he got his first title, his interim title at 145, I don't think a press conference has passed by where some of the reporters didn't ask a question about Conor McGregor, which speaks volumes to how he can stay yeah. in the headlines nonstop, especially taking multiple year layoffs at some time. Yeah, well, he literally has his own media outlet. The Mac Life is, is one right. of the ones they're asking questions uh this is very interesting because you know there had been rumors about the pacquiao fight mm -hmm. and you know connor going back into boxing because there's some things that sort of need to shake out at 155 right uh in mma right now so i i kind of wasn't really bullish on it i thought it was not really going to happen it was just kind of a talk you know sort of thing uh manny pacquiao's side has now come out and said that yes this fight is happening Manny's going to do it. Uh, and we know one thing about Manny. He does a lot of philanthropic work. He's mm -hmm. a representative man, yeah. in, in his country in the Philippines. Uh, and he said that he's going to do it. And the majority of the proceeds that he makes, which will be substantial, will be donated to the COVID relief uh, yeah. efforts in the Philippines. So that leads me to believe that maybe this fight is a little bit more realistic than we had previously thought. Yeah, absolutely. I think this fight will happen for sure. You know, when you have a, the, the guys in the fight, posting pictures and posting posters of the fight yeah. you, you you know that it's already well figured out and I'll, I'll mention manny pacquiao's guy and conor mcgregor's guy are the same guy right they're, they're managed by the exact same group and i think even the same agent uh audi auditar yeah and um i might be messing his name up but i have a feeling that this fight is all but all but done and, and they yeah. just have to figure out the date. I think it's going to be early 2021. And I must say, COVID-19, horrible thing. You know, losing lives is, is always terrible. But, you know, if you're a fight fan and you wanted to see this Manny Pacquiao fight, and for me, Conor McGregor's must-see TV anytime he does anything. He could be doing a watermelon eating contest, and we're going to tune in yeah. to watch that because he's just an entertaining guy. Now you tell me we get to see him fight one of the other baddest boxers on the planet. Um Sign me up, and I think that the COVID uh, situation and the way they're going to make it a charitable event served as a catalyst to make this happen. It maybe. makes it happen easy, and nobody's the, the UFC uh, boxing. Nobody's going to get angry that yeah. they're doing a charity event, and it's it just so happens yeah. to be these two. Maybe this is one of the good things that comes out. One of the only good things that comes out of this pandemic. Yeah. But you know, let let's talk about that for a second because you know, Manny, pa when when you talked about Connor Floyd. You know Floyd's style. He's a counter puncher. Right. He waits for you to make a mistake. He kind of wears you down. Not really known for his finishes. Mm -hmm. Manny Pacquiao's got some good finishes. Manny Pacquiao's a head hunter. He comes straight forward. Uh, I think this fight could be a bit more exciting and a bit more difficult for Conor. I mean, Manny Pacquiao last year beat Keith Thurman. Right. And, you know, we don't talk much about boxing on this show, but we do know about boxing. And Keith Thurman is the cream of the crop. Oh. He's one of the best boxers in the world. And Manny Pacquiao sat him down in the first round, I believe it was. Absolutely. And, and Manny historically has been a very offensive fighter. Might have the fastest hands in boxing. I don't know. Yeah, Ryan Garcia possibly. is pretty fast now. And there's some young guys that are coming up that are real speed demons. But Manny Pacquiao was the original. You watch him pepper a bag. And, and he's like that. We kind of go, we always talk about how Colby Covington can just pepper, pepper, pepper at 70 or so percent. Manny Pacquiao's like the OG at doing that. He peppers that. you at 100 percent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's he got never a gets serious tired. gas tank. He's like, he's like a little energizer bunny. He never gets tired. And yeah. um, I think a lot of people go, oh, Floyd didn't even need to train for, for Connor. He could just, you know, roll out of the couch and. One thing that you have to give Floyd Mayweather credit for when he went in to fight Conor McGregor is we hadn't seen anything like that before. Yeah. One thing that I believe Manny Pacquiao will do and his team will for sure do is go watch the footage of yeah. Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor to see 
McConnor. Yeah, McConnor. <laughs> M- yeah, as Floyd Mayweather's Floyd and father. Calls him. Yeah, that's that's rich. But uh, uh, I think that he will actually go study tape. You know, people were like, "Oh, Floyd can't study any tape on Conor because he's would would just have to go watch MMA fights." And there's really too big of a difference for them to learn that much from yeah. Conor McGregor. Manny Pacquiao now gets a 30 minute show to see what Connor's going to bring and, you know, exactly what he's going to do in a boxing ring. Right. And, and you can't imagine that Connor while still training MMA full time is make going to have that many different tools yeah. in his boxing box, you know, f- yeah. to, to, to present to Manny. So I think that does show a little sign of trouble for Connor McGregor. Yeah. I, I think this fight is more fun than it is competitive. Yeah. I mean, the buildup's going to be fun. Uh, it's it's going to be... It, anytime you have Conor McGregor and another international superstar like Manny Pacquiao, yeah. you're going to make for great TV. There's a charity uh, that's going to benefit from this, some people that are going to benefit from this, so that's wonderful. Um, I, I'm excited for it, but the question is, is it going to be an exhibition mm-hmm. or is it going to be a boxing match where this goes on both of their records? And then it, Conor's saying it's going to happen in the Middle East. Yeah. What does an exhibition even mean? You know, an exhibition, when, when Floyd fought in, what was that, one championship? Yeah, ten chin- That was an exhibition that was just a... a a beat down a so. three round fight right or a four yeah. round fight i can't remember what it was but it was the the rule sets yeah. for exhibition and the term exhibition means something different in every Everywhere country you go. Yeah. so i don't know what uh the middle east is you know refers to an exhibition as i'm assuming they're probably going to do this thing at yaz island is that i'm just led yeah. to believe that it might happen there because they figured out the little the covid bubble and i would have to assume that this fight will take place in some sort of a covid bubble I, it might not be in front of fans, which would be crazy because this is such a crazy moment. Maybe they do uh, very limited fans, maybe. Uh, but, you know, that's what I think they do. I think if they do do fans, what they're going to do is it's going to be like a, a, a fan package experience. Yeah. And it's going to cost somewhere between a Ferrari and a Malibu beach house <laughs> as far as the ticket price goes. And it's going to be like you have to come in two weeks before you get tested. You stay at the W Hotel. Let's just assume it's on Yas Island. And it's like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a yeah. ticket, and you you put you know fifty people in there. They're all COVID bubble tested, mm-hmm. and you're you know one of the only spectators of this fight. There's not many people in this world that can afford that. The ones that can will chomp at the bit to do something. Yeah, like that. Yeah, talk about an experience. That's yeah. unlike anything else. If any of the people that can afford that, that are absolutely rolling in it, want to send two guys that would be very <laughs> yeah. grateful, we'll definitely we'll take up on that. We'll cut some great offer. promo and, and uh, some absolutely. great videos afterwards. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I think, um, so, so the, you know, going back to the actual fight itself, let's assume that it is an exhibition. I just can't imagine that Connor and Manny are going to get in there and dance around and jab each other and then give each other a hug when it's over and say that was fun. This is no. going to be a boxing match. Right. These guys are going to, tr- whether or not it counts on the record or whether or not it's like a, you know, for some sort of thing, it doesn't matter. These guys are getting in there to fight. They're going to create some sort of a belt. Boxing is, is notorious yeah. for doing that. There will be a great <laughs> flashy yeah. belt on the line. Uh, and I'm sure Connor will want to get his hands on it as will Manny. You know what I find so cool about this is Conor McGregor, arguably, even though it's a hard argument to make, is is probably, without a doubt, the biggest star in Ireland right now. Oh, no question. And yeah. and probably ever. Could be ever the biggest celebrity out of Ireland. I can't. Yeah, I mean, maybe you too. I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. And that's four guys. But Manny Pacquiao, probably the biggest star of all time out of the Philippines. No question there as well. So yeah. I, I have a feeling we're going to see this you know, a, a ton of attention brought from the Philippines and the, and the Irish people, you know, they're, they're very um, prideful people in Ireland. Yeah. They're very prideful in the Philippines and they love their fighters, especially those two. So I think it's really cool how they're going to, we're going to see these two nations get behind this, this match. Yeah, it's, it's going to be cool. Um, and, and like you said, I, I do think they have some limited fans if they do this. And we know Dana likes to play everything a little close to the chest sometimes yeah. and not really reveal too much information. He said in the press conference last night that he knows nothing about this fight. He's not been in discussions with it. I personally find that very hard to believe seeing as Connor and Manny have both announced the fight that he didn't, have any inclination that this was coming. Uh, I think he knows more about it than he's leading on. And I think that uh, 
I think this, you know, if you asked me a week ago, I would say, nah, they, they'll talk about it, but it probably won't happen because something interesting will happen in MMA and Conor will pop back into the UFC. And, you know, maybe there's a thing with Floyd down the road and, and Manny's in his 40s already. I, I think this fight happens now. I mean, I, quite honestly, I may, I may look like a fool later on. Maybe this doesn't, uh, this conversation doesn't age well, but I, I, I could see this really happening. No, I, I think it absolutely happens, yeah. and I think it happens next for both of them. I think yeah. they're both going to you know, go get in the, in, the, in the gym, and they're going to train, and they're going to do a real fight camp. And when, when we talk about exhibition, I, we don't know what weight they're fighting at. We don't know what amount of rounds. I would venture to say that the fewer rounds, the better for Connor. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say the sooner, the better for Connor, because you don't want to give Manny Pacquiao too much time to dissect his entire boxing yeah. game. Which he can do, and he will do if he has the time. I think uh, let's go ahead and get this match rolling. Uh, they they are saying it's going to be early 2021. I, I I could see it happening before then, but yeah. you know they give themselves a little bit of buffer space in case they you know anything happens or the holidays. Maybe they want to spend them with their family. Um, but I think that this this fight can't be stopped because they're doing it for the the charity reasons and because they're doing it for the COVID relief. Yeah. It's, it's just like, you know, the world is, is just so thirsty for entertainment right now that, you know, Netflix, they're running out of things on Netflix to watch. They're running out of sports to watch sports are coming back, but then they're a nightmare because, you know, people are exiting the bubbles that these uh, organizations are starting. Fighting is pretty easy. Yeah. You get two guys, you throw them in a ring, make sure they're not uh, testing positive the week before. And, and we got ourselves a show. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think for all those reasons, it does happen. And when you tie a charitable uh, benefit to it in some way, it makes it even that much more realistic. And I hope it happens. I, you know, And like I said, I don't, I don't hope it happens from the standpoint that I think this is going to be, I'm under some sort of illusion, even as much as I love Conor McGregor, that he's going to get in there and dominate Manny Pacquiao. I think that Manny Pacquiao can pretty easily win this fight. That said, you know, anything can happen in there. People, yeah. you know, it, nobody, nobody thought Andy Ruiz was going to, you know, win his fight either against Anthony Joshua. So it's uh, well, what one, it's fun one, at least. one step further than that. Nobody thought Conor McGregor would even land a punch, let alone get out of the first round, let alone kick Floyd's ass for thirty minutes. Yeah. Now he got his ass kicked a little bit more than Floyd than Floyd did. But make no mistake about it, if that if that uppercut, that famous uppercut that uh, he probably has hanging up on a picture. Uh, you know the size house, of yeah. him in his house if that would have landed a little bit different or a little bit harder and he would have put floyd to sleep i think you would have the biggest star on the planet even yeah. still to this day and M- manny pacquiao has a chin we've seen him get knocked out before and conor mcgregor has power so as long as he, you know they they make this fight at a, at a normal weight i yeah. think i think it'll happen somewhere between 154 and and 160. I don't. I think Manny Pacquiao yeah. is naturally a smaller guy, kind of like Floyd, where mm-hmm. you know they walk around almost where they fight. Uh, I think that maybe Manny Pacquiao is. I able think to, 54 is probably where it'll happen because yeah. I don't. If I'm on Manny's side, I don't want Connor coming in too much bigger. Yeah. You know, like because Connor probably weighs what a, a buck 80. Yeah. You probably. know, and so if if he comes in at 160, he can, you know, hydrate back up to at least 173, 175, something like that. And Manny's. Yeah. I mean, probably soaking wet is one forty seven. Yeah, you know one. Yeah, he'll have to yeah. he'll have to get on an eating di- uh, regimen, not yeah. a diet for this fight. But I think I mean you know Manny's got power regardless, and he's got crazy speed and crazy uh, pace. And as you said, he's got the uh, benefit that Floyd didn't have of watching thirty minutes of Connor doing boxing, right? Which is something that Floyd never had the opportunity to do. So. Moving into a bit of a less exciting call out for Conor McGregor. Yeah. He posted a bizarre uh, string of Instagram DMs. It looked like with Dana White. Yeah. Uh, Dana was pretty pissed off about that. Saying broke that it bro was code. Violating bro code. Not even bro code. Any kind of code. Dana White said. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't too thrilled. I, I don't think you do something like that. Um, especially when you're talking about other people and negotiating. And you don't, you know, Diego doesn't deserve to know what Dana said to Conor about that fight you know it's it's just it's just a weird sticky situation uh but dana white said last night you got a guy that's the number three uh ranked number two or three ranked fighter in the world at his division and he's calling out an unranked 39 year old diego sanchez to headline an event in la dana's like what what's wrong with it what what what, what are you thinking so what are you what is he thinking connor's been painted as a lot of things in his career one of them isn't a bully yeah but 
he he's very specific with who he wants to fight he just always seems to bite off a, a, a tough piece of meat and, and a hard night out no matter what you know you go back to his early days he's fighting max holloway dustin poirier and then you know his next fights he's calling out the champs at uh 155 that, that happens to be eddie alvarez you know right. oh and then nate diaz and him have a beef so he's never been the guy to go bully people right he he's He's not one of those guys who will fight anybody just like Cowboy at the drop of a dime. Just go fight whoever. It doesn't matter. He's very strategic with who he picks to fight. This one seems a little bit more like a bully stance. Tactic, yeah. yeah, and I don't really like that. I, I think that I think personally, Connor meant it with respect. I do. I, th- I agree with that. But I, I, don't, I think it, it came out wrong. You know, it's just yeah. like when a comedian tells a joke. The the pro, the, the the concept. And the idea is probably funny, but they miss the mark. Yeah. This is what that situation is. I think he respects Diego so much. He respects the legend that Diego is and that Diego left behind so far. It's incredible to know that Diego is even still in the game. Yeah. And he wants to kind of share the octagon. That's, that's what I got out of that. But then you look at it from another standpoint it's like oh it does kind of look like he's bullying because yeah. you're supposed to be you're you're in talks for if 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 justin gaethje backs out and michael chandler's not signed to the ufc you're stepping in to fight khabib who's the right. baddest dude on the roster and you want to fight diego sanchez instead in la which is an event that's not even happening i think i agree <laughs> with you i think it was well intentioned um but you know it, and god knows what type of training diego's uh guru or what, whatever i don't yeah. know what we're calling Masa- that guy but masseuse, yeah. <laughs> masseuse would have planned for conor mcgregor a little wax on wax off but yeah. yeah you know i mean i think what it was intentioned or conor's intentions were similar to israel adesanya calling out anderson silva mm-hmm. and there was a lot of respect there anderson silva was considered at one point the greatest mma fighter of all time diego sanchez considered one of the toughest MMA fighters of all time, but he's not even close to the GOAT right. conversation. Um, he's not really competitive anymore. I think the intention was there, but it was a very weird call out. And then the fact that it was Instagram DMs that got screenshotted and, and, and posted, it looked a little disingenuous. Uh, I hope that that fight does not happen. Uh, I don't see any set of circumstances where Connor doesn't just plow through him and knock him out in the first round. Right. And, then what, like you said, he's going to look like a bully, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and what, there's, what's the point? Right. And, and I know, I think that would actually in, in Connor's last five, six, seven fights, that would be do the, do the worst numbers. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. going to watch that. Like, nobody's going to get up out of bed to, to, to go watch that. And, and I, you know, you can't really blame him. I, cause it doesn't, it's not fair. Cause the casuals who like, who follow Connor McGregor, they want to know, okay, who's this guy Connor's fighting? Oh, he's fighting this scary, undefeated Russian that takes people down and just beats the crap mm-hmm. out of him. Oh, man, I got to see that. Yeah. Who's Connor fighting? He's fighting the guy that was the champion in Bellator. And now he, and, you know, the he's Alvarez, the champion here. He came over and got the belt here. He's, he's, a, he's a double champ, Bellator, both organizations. Oh, man, I got to see that. Mm-hmm. Who's Connor fighting? Oh, Floyd Mayweather, the greatest yeah. boxer of all time. Then it's, who's, who's Connor fighting? Oh, he's fighting a 39-year-old guy that's clearly got some brain damage and some some problems that that he needs to sort through and is not really competitive anymore. And it just it just makes for a weird situation. Yeah, yeah if you were way into UFC back in the early 2000s, you know Diego Sanchez and you know he was a monster. But the game has evolved so much skill-wise that you know Connor and him don't they didn't even they didn't even learn the same moves. You know, right, what right, Diego right, right. was learning back in the day isn't even close to the same things that Connor's been working on. And it, it just, it, it would not go over well for people. And it would, you know, Connor McGregor, it, like I said, he's never been a bully. Mm-hmm. He's been the guy that's willing to fight anybody, but he's strategic about who he fights. This one just seems like a little bit of a miss for calling out Diego Sanchez. And I, I, I would love to see him back in the octagon soon i think we're going to see him in the in the in the ring, the ring first first but um it's it's just hard to it's just hard to imagine anybody signing off on diego sanchez versus Conor. well dana white said in those dms i would lose my promoter's license and rightfully so right you know and and i i kind of agree with that like you don't make that fight no that fight is not competitive that fight is not fun that fight is you know and i get maybe diego makes some money out of it and it's like it just it just feels slimy in a way. You yeah, know? It, it just yeah. it's not good. Um, and nobody, including myself, and everybody who listens to this channel knows how much of a Conor McGregor fan I am, and you are as well. 
think that that was a good move. One, to post the DMs, or and two, to want to fight Diego Sanchez in a main event yeah. in L.A. I, I think paying respect to Diego was great. I think that yeah. he's, he's showing that he, he's a fan of Diego. He's a, he's a supporter of Diego and, and wants to give Diego some rub that he probably deserves. But unfortunately, he's just too long in the tooth. He's, too, his, he, he's past his expiration date. And it, nobody wants to see the hottest guy in combat sports fight a guy that should have retired a few years ago, yeah. probably. Um, I think maybe leave Diego Sanchez to the to the uh, um, maybe a Robbie Lawler or a, a oh my a, god yeah. <laughs> Cowboy Cerrone yeah, you, some, the, some, old, yeah the older yeah, guys yeah, yeah, yeah. You let let them they're kind of in their own bracket their own division and they're in yeah. they're not gonna ever fight for a title but let them do their thing Conor McGregor could step in and fight for a title in a couple of divisions and right be competitive now. and be competitive. Yeah. Not saying he would win, but he could, he is one of the guys they're going to call. If a few f- fighters pull Conor out. McGregor could be the 155 champion. Yeah. Diego Sanchez has a 0% chance of, of being a champion at this, at this stage. Right. Right. So, you know, for, for that reason, and for a lot of other reasons, I, I just don't want to see that fight. And just a quick question about Diego, you know, he, Dana was asked in the press conference last night, He's got four fights left on his contract. He wants to fight him out. Dana said he was going to really have to consider whether he was going to allow that to happen or not and talk to Sean Shelby and talk to Diego's camp. Do you think that it's appropriate for Diego to have four more fights? Yes, under the right circumstances. I think he should get the the right the right opponents. Yeah. Obviously not the Conor McGregor's. Maybe Robbie Lawler was a bit of an uh uh, but cowboy, overstep. I mean, cowboy could be fun. No, yeah. the older the older fight fans would love to see that. You know, put him against Clay Guida again. Yeah, put yeah. him in there with Clay Guida. Yeah. Um, f- maybe Nick Diaz. We haven't seen Nick Diaz in the cage in a, in a meaningful yeah. period of time. Hasn't won in a meaningful period of time. Uh, Diego's won. I think Dana said three of his last five fights, even though some of them were from illegal knees, and he's not finishing anybody, and he's yeah. not really looking sharp. Nick Diaz hasn't been doing anything yeah. lately. So maybe if you want to just get Nick's feet wet before you throw him in there, you know, Ariel Hawani's like, let's see him fight Leon Edwards. That's a horrible night out for Nick Diaz. Yeah, I don't that- care. I don't care how badass he is or how tough he was. Leon Edwards is a killer, a, an absolute yeah. killer. Yeah. I was there when, when he dominated RDA in San Antonio, absolutely dominated. Him. Yeah. Yeah, Leon Edwards is is no joke, yeah. and yeah, I, 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 I would like to see Nick because, for all intents and purposes, the last time we saw Nick was you know what 2015, yeah. like January of 2015, UFC 183, I think it was, um, against Anderson Silva. Yeah, and you know, he, he obviously he fought Silva, who was much more in his prime than he is now, but yeah. you know, he still lost. Wait, well, that ended up being a no contest. But point being, I think that Nick Diaz should be given a fight to step into the UFC and get back in the swing of things after five years before being thrown to Leon Edwards. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, and Diego Sanchez, what, well, you know, like maybe for his fourth fight, cause you, nobody gets to leave on top of the sport, but maybe we could, we could do that for Diego since he's done so much for yeah. us. Maybe, th- maybe see if CM Punk wants to, to get, fight. Back, get back in the octagon one time and then we'll just see Diego Sanchez absolutely smash yeah, There we go. Yeah. If we're, if we're doing that, we might as well just we might as well it, have some know? fun with it. But yeah, you know, um, but back to Connor. Uh, so it looks like this Manny Pacquiao thing may be more realistic than we thought. Um, do you think he's got any chance of winning that fight? Uh, you know, they all, the, the old saying is the puncher's chance. Everybody's got a puncher's chance. Um, it's a little bit more realistic in boxing than it is in MMA or in in a grappling situation. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody ever said that, that you've got the arm bars chance. You know, yeah, you're no, not that's just going to yeah. you're not just going to accidentally slide a guillotine on somebody and, and land it. Um, he could land on on Manny. I don't know how Manny's chin is. I've, I have a feeling it's probably still pretty good, even though he's taken some some brutal knockouts, arguably one of the worst knockouts of all time. But um I think he would have to come in and bully him and concede later rounds because he's not going to have the gas that Manny has. It's yeah. just that's a that's a lifetime's worth of conditioning for a certain thing. Manny has it. Connor doesn't. I, I think what he should do is what we thought uh, Paulo Costa should do against Israel Adesanya, which is go, 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 yep. and leave nothing left and hope to God that, that, that uh, Manny Pacquiao wasn't left standing. 
Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. And I think the chances of that happening are probably... I give... Connor a ten percent chance of winning and Manny ninety. Yeah, and and it, and it drops by, by round Substan- by round. Yeah, that's in the first three rounds. It goes down to ninety nine point nine nine seven after the you third You know, one round. thing too, I want to see Connor do, and it, you know, I think that this would be kind of a, an experiment that I would like to see is throw some more MMA style striking at him. Not, I'm not yeah. talking about go kick his legs and go elbow him. Yeah, obviously that's illegal in boxing, but. Look at how TJ Dillashaw sets stuff up. Yeah. You know, go throw some of those types of things that you didn't throw at Floyd that are, will, would that Manny can go watch and see. But, you know, you see those those shuffle steps and the, yeah. uh, those types of things can really present problems for boxers because they, they, just, they just don't see Nobody it. does it. And you, well, that's a great point. And, and I think you're right because it's there's rules about what types of strikes you can throw in boxing mm-hmm. and it's only punches, right. but there's no rules about how you set those up. Right. You know, you can, you can do some weird steps and some dominant Cruz style movement and that would really disrupt a boxer. Now I think they figure it out. Somebody right. like Manny Pacquiao who's a multiple time world champion figures it out and, and, and gets around it. But for the first couple rounds, it could present a bit of a problem. Right. Right. And that's, that's the one thing is we saw him fight the best ever do it in Floyd Mayweather for 30 minutes. And he didn't resort to any of his MMA style striking. That was Conor McGregor boxing. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, he did a great job, but if he were to throw in some of those, you know, feints that you would see in MMA, some of the distance that you see creators, fighters create in MMA, and then throw that at, at, at Manny in the beginning. I think that raises his chances a little bit. But you know, this is all in good fun. I think they're they're doing something great, something charitable, something that we should all uh, tune in to see. And uh, I'm super excited yeah. for it. Guys, let us know: is this fight realistic, or are Nick and I just crazy? Yeah. And uh, can Connor get it done? Can he beat Manny Pacquiao? Let us know. We think probably not, but. You know what? Maybe you guys can change our minds. Let us know in the comments. And thanks, as always, for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and check us out where you listen to podcasts, guys. We'll Have see a you great in the next day. One. Peace.